In this video, we're continuing on with the graphing absolute value functions worksheet on the CUDA software website, and I'll leave a link in the description below so you know how to access that. So picking up with number five, we're going to plot the equation y equals the absolute value of x plus two. We're going to start with the t table, and we have to find the turning point. If you remember from the last video, the turning point occurs when what's inside the absolute value is equal to zero. So x plus two equals 0, subtracting 2 from both sides, that x is going to be equal to a negative 2. So when x is negative 2, this absolute value of x plus 2 is equal to 0. Let's plug in for x to solve for y. Negative 2 plus 2, we know that equals 0, and the absolute value of 0 is 0. So when x is negative 2, y is equal to 0. Now we're going to find the y value for an x that's less than negative 2 and a y value for an x that's greater than negative 2. If they're the same number of units or same number of steps away, let's say I choose negative 3, that's 1 less than negative 2, and negative 1, that's 1 greater than negative 2, the y values should be the same since the absolute value functions are symmetric. So let's go ahead and do the math. Plugging in negative 3, we get the absolute value of negative 3 plus 2, and that's going to be equal to the absolute value of negative 1. And the absolute value of negative 1 is a positive 1. y is equivalent to 1 when x is negative 3. Now plugging in a negative 1, we get negative 1 plus 2, which leaves us with a positive 1. So the absolute value of positive 1 is 1. So y equals 1 when x is negative 1. So you can see that when x is negative 3, one step less than negative 2, or negative 1, one step greater than negative 2, the y values are the same. Let's go ahead and graph this. We have negative 3, positive 1, negative 2, 0, and negative 1, positive 1. So the absolute value function has two straight lines coming out of the vertex. One is a positive slope, and the other negative. And that's the answer to number five. Moving on to number six, I'm going to go over that trick, or that helpful hint that I mentioned in the last video, about finding the turning point without having to plug in any values. Let's go ahead and just write our t-table. Now we know the turning point occurs when what's inside the absolute value is equal to zero. So that's going to happen when x is negative 1. So it's going to be the opposite of whatever number it's added to or subtracted from. So if we had x plus 2 like we did in the last problem, we knew that was 0 when x was negative 2. If we had x minus 3, well this is the same as x plus 3, so we know that that turning point occurs when x is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So right away we know that that turning point occurs when x is equal to negative 1. And since the absolute value is 0 when we plug in that negative 1, we know that the y value is just going to be what's left over, which is that positive 3. So as opposed to plugging in negative 1 and doing the math out, you can see that we know that this is 0 at all the turning points. So whatever value is left outside the absolute value function is going to be equal to that y value. Now let's take one point that's less than that, so negative 2, and we'll do a point that's greater, 0. So when x is negative 2, we have the absolute value of negative 2 plus 1 plus 3. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 plus 3 is what we have left. The absolute value of negative 1 is equal to a positive 1, so we have 1 plus 3, which is equivalent to 4. So y equals 4 when x is negative 2. And since it's symmetrical, we know that since we went 1 less than negative 1, when we go 1 greater than negative 1, they have the same value. So we know that 0, 4 is another point on this absolute value function. So now that we have the three points, including the turning point, let's go ahead and graph that. Negative 2 4, negative 1, 3, and then 0, 
4. And that's the answer for number 6. So you can see that finding the turning point and then finding symmetric points makes graphing absolute value functions a lot easier than picking random points and then graphing. Because think about it this way, if you picked random points not knowing what the turning point was, and you started by picking negative 4, negative 3, and negative 2, you would get simply a straight line and not know that this function was turning. But we can recognize that since it's an absolute value function, it's going to have a vertex at some point. And it's easier to find that vertex at the start as opposed to plugging in number after number until we eventually find it. In number 7, we have y equal to the opposite of the absolute value of x minus 2 minus 2. So again, we're still going to locate that turning point. When this absolute value function is 0, which occurs when x is a positive 2, since 2 minus 2 is 0, that y value is going to be what's left on the outside, which is negative 2. So now that we have our turning point, we'll plug in one value less, and we'll plug in one value greater. So we know that these are equivalent, so now all we have to do is plug in a single x value. Let's go ahead and plug in the 3. So we have y equals the opposite of 3 minus 2 minus 2. That's going to be y equals the opposite of the absolute value of 3 minus 2, which is 1, the opposite of the absolute value of positive 1 minus 2, we're going to have y equal to the opposite of the absolute value of 1, which is a positive 1, so we have negative 1, and then minus 2. Negative 1 minus 2 is going to give us negative 3. So when x is 3, y is negative 3. Same with when x is 1, y is also negative 3. And if you don't feel comfortable, still feel free to plug in that 1. Or you can do it now and double check. 1 minus 2 gives us a negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1, but we're taking the opposite of that positive 1. So it's a negative 1 minus 2, which gives us, again, a negative 3. Graphing those, we have 1, negative 3, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3. So we have a positive slope going into the vertex and a negative slope coming out of the vertex, which is flipped from the other ones because we're doing the opposite of the absolute value. If this was positive, then it would look something like this, as opposed to that. Let's move on to number 8, which is the last function we're going to graph in this video, and in the following video, we'll finish out with numbers 9 through 12. So doing our t-table, we're going to find the turning point. So that's when x is negative 1, and when x is negative 1, our y is a positive 4. I'm going to do 1 point less than negative 1, so that's going to be negative 2, and 1 point greater than negative 1 is 0. I'll go ahead and plug in 0 for x, so we will be left with y equals the opposite of the absolute value of a positive 1 plus 4, so y is equal to negative 1 plus 4, since the absolute value of 1 is 1, and we're taking the opposite of that, so it's a negative 1 plus 4, so y is going to be equivalent to a positive 3. And since they're both the same distance from that turning point, the values are the same. So negative 2, 3, and then 0, 3. Plotting those. and then connecting the lines. And that wraps up this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. Both are greatly appreciated.